Welcome to the Purpose and Purity Podcast. I'm your host, Titania, and I'm here to help you maximize your impact in life through embracing biblical womanhood. Every Tuesday, you'll get actionable and biblical insights on how to overcome sexual strongholds, cultivate an intimate relationship with God, and live out your unique purpose as a disciple maker and girl boss. After the show, the conversation continues in our Purpose and Purity Facebook group. I can't wait to see you there. Hey, thanks for joining me for another episode of the Purpose and Purity podcast with me, Titania Page, and today, my lovely, handsome, awesome (laughs) co-host, Gerald Page, my husband. Say hey. Vanna White. Hey. (laughs) Vanna White? Yeah, you introduced me like I was Vanna White or something. Who is Vanna White? Oh. Let's not speak on this. Do you know who that is? <laughs> listener, gentle listener. <laughs> she's, she's a girl from Will of Fortune that turns the letters. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. Who knows that? Anyways, <laughs> today we're going to be discussing some healthy boundaries that can help protect your marriage. And we're talking about, you know, take protect your marriage sexually um, concerning, you know, sexual purity in your marriage. And so these are just... Again, not an exhaustive list as you've been joining us, hopefully, on this um, series called Embracing Purity in Marriage. This is our fourth episode in this series um, on the podcast. Hopefully not our last. So if you want to hear more or you want us to discuss more about um, purity in marriage, do drop your questions um, in an email to us, um, Titania Page at lifebeforeeternity.com. Or um, email me at titania.page at gmail.com to get your questions on our next podcast episode. Uh, But so today we're talking about, again, the healthy boundaries that can help protect your marriage. Okay, so I will start off with number one as we dive into the content. And I'll just say starting off like when we talk about sexual purity um there are things that in general singles kind of like maybe if they're in the church or maybe if you've been you know studying the subject of purity um you know there are a lot of things that transfer over from singleness to marriage when you're talking about purity um just some general you know guidelines you know as far as like just common sense like I, I probably shouldn't put myself in a situation that could lead to, you know, compromising my sexual my my sexual purity, like perhaps by, you know, um being alone with a girl or you know or, or a boy, you know. <laughs> you get what I'm saying. So there's some things that are gonna transfer from being a single to a married, um, that won't change. Like whether regardless of whether you're a single Christian or a married Christian you probably shouldn't be be in somebody's bedroom, you know, chatting with them and things like that. So just keep that in mind, bear that in mind as we go forward. And I get, I think that too will help you as you just consider uh, perhaps if you're doing something, if it's, you know, not right or if it was wrong, you, you get what I'm saying. So just bear that in mind. So number one, I would definitely say a good boundary to keep is to, Avoid being alone with members of the opposite sex. Or if you're struggling with same-sex attraction, you know, if you know you're attracted to a certain person, you know, then I would probably, you know, try to keep that um, relationship to, you know, as formal as possible, you know, given the circumstances that you're in, whether that's at your job or wherever, um, if it's even at like some, some place like church or something, I would, you know, you can just love that person, um, from afar or with a group, <laughs> you know, you don't have to be alone with that person or put yourself in a situation where it's going to stretch you, um, concerning, concerning your feelings for that person, but definitely would not be alone with um, someone of the opposite sex. And I'll say, like, as a woman, and Gerald, you tell me if, if this is um, not the case for men as well, but I, a lot of women these days, they kind of get, I want to say, a little offended when people say, like, or when I've, when I've had discussions with people about s- having relationships with person of the opposite sex. 
um, they get offended as if to say, well, can't I have male friends? And I don't think there's... I, well, would you say that that's the same as far as men? Like, do they get offended or do you hear a lot of people complain about not being able to have female friends? Uh, I don't think men men complain about that. I think men are a lot of times as dishonest as women are about the situation. Like, we don't... Like, nothing's going to happen kind of mm. mentality about it or it's it's completely harmless kind yeah. of mentality about it and you know and i'm not saying that you can or cannot have of uh, uh um friendships of people of the opposite sex i don't think there's anything wrong with having friendships with people of the opposite sex it's just having those boundaries to protect um proper relationships is, is what's important yeah definitely um I would say that, again, like Gerald said, it's not a question of can I have a friendship with a person of the opposite sex. That's fine. But the boundary here, the keeping that, for example, like when we say avoid being alone, we're talking about we're not, I'm not going to go on a casual lunch or grab coffee with somebody by myself that's a male. Like, even if I work with that person, like, I'm not just going to be sitting there having coffee with them or having lunch with them. And and for a lot, some people, for a lot of people, they would say, well, this, I mean, it, don't you think that's a bit much? But it's all about, number one, um, <laughs> a lot of times it starts something small, like just talking to somebody is the beginning of being seduced. You know, it starts with like a slick conversation with somebody. They say a little bit here or they give you a compliment there. And in a in a situation where that is timely, like let's say you've been discouraged in your marriage or something like that. And this guy's giving you all these compliments and all of this praise. I mean, that's just what you need to hear right then. And, and when you listen um, and when you're allowing that to be, when you receive that, you know, that's just the beginning. Like seduction starts with speech. And so I definitely don't want to put myself in a situation where number one, I'm alone with somebody where they could be talking to me like that. And I'm married. You get what I'm saying? Um, that's, that's not, that's not cool. And then there's also the thing of like, especially if you're a Christian, <clears throat> it, it portrays an appearance of evil. Um, And then there's this theme in the Bible, like you don't even want to appear to be doing evil and you don't want to put yourself in a situation like that. And when I'm alone and I'm a married woman with a man for lunch, for dinner, wherever, out watching a movie, that is an appearance of evil because it appears like I'm having an affair with somebody. Even if I say, oh, just talking we're just having the conversation yeah you need to have a conversation with you your husband that person so i would say that if you want to enjoy friendships with anybody that's of the opposite sex it needs to be on a double date or with your husband because it's your friend you know your husband needs to be friends with this person too because you don't want to again slip into that stage one just being seduced in speech or uh, and again like you need to be concerned about your christian witness you know having an appearance of evil having it being twisted or, or having it being said about you that you met with somebody that's not your husband or you know and vice versa did you have anything to add about that babe uh yeah and this is gonna bleed into the second point but uh even if you're not even if you are are not attracted to a person and and Nia touched on this uh, just now, but uh, these relationships, they develop that way, like through conversation, through time spent. You may not start off initially attracted to a person, mm-hmm. but as you continue to get to know a person, then you start to have, um, I guess, tendencies and, 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 and attractions towards that person that yeah. might necessarily have been something that, that caught you at first glance. Um, and that's, I think this is important for like, a lot of professionals uh, who work in a corporate environment that, you know, you're not, um, you're, you, there's instances that happen at work with people of the opposite sex 
um, that you can end up, you know, forming a friendship or relationship that ends up transcending those boundaries. So Mm. um, just avoiding being alone and just keeping making sure that you're not um, allowing those those boundaries to be to, to be crossed. Yeah, I've definitely I've seen it like across different occupations I've had in different places I worked where it's kind of like a culture of married people having almost like a person that they are drawn to at their job. And so I've, I've even heard some people have the audacity to call that person like my work spouse. Like this is the person who's like my fake wife or something here on the job, you know. That's not a. It's just not appropriate, you know, to have a fake spouse or or have that type of person outside of your spouse, outside of your spouse that you're connecting with, which does lead into our second point, which is, um, don't vent your relationship issues to someone of the opposite opposite sex, or, and I would not just only like limit that to venting your relationship issues, but allow yourself to develop a deep emotional connection with somebody that is of um, the opposite sex. We'll be right back with more of today's episode of the Purpose and Purity Podcast. Hey sis, Nia here. Before we dive back into the show, I'd like you to consider supporting this ministry by becoming a patron on my Patreon page. Patreon is a crowdfunding site that allows you to financially support full-time content creators like me. Through my ministries, LifeBeforeEternity.com and TitaniaPage.com, I teach women spiritual habits that lead to wholeness in Christ. If you've been blessed by the podcast, videos, and digital resources I produced, help me cover the ministry's monthly expenses by pledging as little as $1 per video or podcast creation. Your generous support will help me impact more women with practical and biblical teaching worldwide. The $1 tier is the perfect place to start to say thank you, but you're free to access rewards, recognition, and exclusive events at higher patron tiers as well. Visit patreon.com forward slash life before eternity now to become a patron. Now let's dive back into the show. This just came to mind, but Gerald, what would you say is like a kind of like a red flag or a warning sign that you might be a little bit too close to somebody that's not your spouse? Uh, when you start spending, um, I mean, at some point, I, I and I just I'm speaking from my own what I see. Um, at some point, you if if you ever find yourself spending time like. I guess in my, I, I, it's hard to just draw a line, but but if you're if you're spending a lot of time with a person outside of your work functions, like yeah, I mean you take breaks, you know, you take mm-hmm. lunch, you take you know, you might walk out of your walk away from your desk, walk to somebody else's mm-hmm. desk, talk, start some small talk. When that becomes a regular thing for a person, you formed a bond with that person. Yeah. And so and, and that's not always a bad thing. Like I think sometimes your your relationships, but when when it's with a person of the opposite sex, somebody that can con- potentially get in the middle of your marriage, mm-hmm. that's a problem. Mm-hmm. So it's just something to keep in mind. Like if you if you spend a lot of time with somebody off of um you know, kinda off on work but off work mm-hmm. or you know during your lunch breaks or something like that you might want to question hey wh- who is this person really to me and do I need to be on guard mm-hmm. uh, with my my interactions with this person and let me just insert that everything we're talking about applies physically and virtually because sometimes people you know it gets slick and like I ain't with nobody by myself but you in a chat room by yourself with somebody or you texting somebody Um, that you should, you know, be texting and things like that. So just keep that in mind. Like, we, this applies whether you're (laughs) spatially, like, like a physical distance or even just virtually, you know, or something that's like, you know, 
I cannot physically see it, but, you know, you are doing it behind, you know, closed doors, so to speak. Um, but I would say another way you can tell that it's kind of gone too far is that if you hear that this person is going to be at a certain if you hear that they're going to be at a certain function and you have to be there or you know that they're going to be a certain place and you want to sit next to them or you want to be next to them or you want to make sure you look good because they're going to be there, then that's like a sign of like maybe you like taking it, you've taken it too far. It's developed um, too far. Um, you definitely shouldn't be trying to like, you know, spruce up and wear your best, you know, dress to the nines or whatever, just because somebody else is there. There's nothing wrong with trying to look good, but if you know that you're trying to look good for somebody, then that's probably, (laughs) I would say that's definitely a sign that you need to reevaluate the relationship you have with that person because it's, it's probably gone too far. But um, the point of this this uh, suggestion is that you can have you can have ruined or um, compromised your purity in, in your marriage not only just by having a physical intercourse with somebody or something like that, but by emotionally having this bond or t- attachment to someone that is not you know that's not of your spouse. And so you have to be honest with yourself about that because I think there's a degree of like, you you might try to say, well, I, I don't have to do this or the Bible doesn't say that I shouldn't do this or you can kind of twist your freedom, so to speak, to use it as the opportunity to sin and you have to be honest with yourself about what you're doing. And so... um Number three, just speaking to, which speaks to kind of like what we were talking about earlier, where we were saying it, it doesn't just have to be something physical or you, or you can be trying to follow these rules physically, but not virtually, I mean, you know, like online or something like that. But um, steer clear of sexual entertainment. And so just to kind of like elaborate what we mean on that, sexual entertainment can be anything from going to a physical place like a club like a coyote ugly or like going to a strip bar like going someplace where people dance erotically for your entertainment and stuff like that is what i'm saying or like buying or watching porn um you might be digitally doing something virtually doing something like participating in a sex call or listening to someone else participate or um, playing like certain video games or watching certain cartoons that cater uh, to people sexually or sexual fantasies. So like any of that can apply as sexual entertainment. And you just don't want to engage in that at all. Um, I think a lot of people, and you tell me what you think about this people, uh, Gerald. Um, sometimes people get caught up in trying to find a line, like set a line. So I can say and point to that line, like, I can get really close to the line. Listen, I'm right at the line, but I didn't go over it. And that's not really the heart behind it. If that's, that's, you know, if you catch yourself in that kind of attitude, then you really need to, like, come to the Lord and, you know, talk that out with him because that's, that's, that's a real big red flag that you're not in the place that you need to be. But some people get caught up in saying, well, I'm not physically doing something. I'm just watching or I'm not so-called participating because my body isn't involved, but it's still, um, it's still engaging. It's still betraying. What would you say about that, Gerald? 100% agree. Uh, there's a lot of people that get caught up in, you know, some people think it's a no brainer, but other people it's like, it's something that they really are convinced that it's, it's okay. And, um, you know, we just want to be up in front and honest and say, it's not okay. Mm-hmm. Um, there are certain places that it's just not okay to be. There are certain things it's not okay to look at. Mm-hmm. And there's certain activities it's not okay to do uh, with other people. One of my personal things is not necessarily sexual entertainment, but one thing that I don't do with people is go to parties where I know people are going to be drinking a lot of alcohol. Mm-hmm. Um, so... 
Um, those are kind of the types of social scenes I avoid because I know that uh, those those arenas are are like it's a breeding ground for for starting an inappropriate relationship or a relationship that may go uh, a little further than it needs to uh, go uh, because of the the atmosphere is very relaxed. The atmosphere is it's very welcoming and it's, it just kind of makes you feel like everything's okay and you kind of lose track of of where you need to be. So um, that's just something else I just thought of when we were talking about this. Yeah, I definitely agree. And a part of it is, again, like we talked about, like the fir- from the jump, like a lot of when it comes to marriage, like talking about how to, pr- to protect the purity of your marriage or protect purity within your marriage, like purity is really just about um, number one, biblical purity is about pursuing the Lord. It's about pleasing God and having that intimate, intimate relationship with Him and fellowship with Him. Now, when we're talking about sexual purity, sexual purity is just one piece of that, you know, um, pursuit. But um, when we're talking about purity within your marriage, like it, it, like we say, it translates from the single person to the married person, you know, like as a married person, you still don't want to be sleeping with somebody who's not your spouse. You still don't want to be engaging in like homosexuality, just di- di- different things like the same rules really apply to the, to the married person. So again, it's about cultivating a godly character from within, you know, just because you want to love the Lord and then just, being honest about where you where you lie or where you're weak um or your tendencies toward whatever sexual sin so just keep those things in mind so these are our tips today for you guys um just to to put some healthy boundaries in place or to at least get you thinking about okay what can i start to do to protect my marriage um to protect the purity of my marriage and so this is um, potentially the last in this series, potentially the last episode within this series, Embracing Purity and Marriage. But it can go longer if you guys go ahead and drop your questions and comments um, below if you're watching on YouTube or um, in our Facebook group if you've been listening via iTunes. And if you like this content, if you want more content like this, Go ahead and drop a like, subscribe, or, you know, leave a review again on iTunes to help more people find this content and so that you can stay up to date on our latest episodes here um, on the Purpose and Purity podcast with me, Titania Page, and today my awesome co-host, Gerald. (laughs) Dad, I white. (laughs) Anyway, so thanks for joining us. I hope you were blessed by this content and can't wait to see you again next time. Bye-bye. See ya. All right, that's it for today's episode. Thank you so much for listening to the Purpose and Purity podcast with me, Titania Page. If you like this podcast, please show your support by leaving a review on iTunes. It helps spread the word so other women can find the show. You can also catch me on TitaniaPage.com, YouTube, and Instagram at Titania Page, where I have even more content for the passionate Christian woman. Love you all so much. Bye.